Hello, and welcome to In Techno with Lissa and Cohesity. Today, I am chatting with my friend Derek, who is going to tell us a little bit about himself and Cohesity. Hi, Derek. Thanks for joining me. Hey there. Thanks for having me. Sure thing. So will you tell me a little bit about why you're qualified to chat with me today? Absolutely. So I've been doing this, uh, living the IT life, maybe uh, close to 20 years now. I've got a few gray hairs to ship, but not too many. But uh, but yeah, I started out in my career really trying to just learn everything I could. I wanted to be the go-to guy uh, who knew how to do everything. I was naive enough to think that I could know all of that. So uh, I went out and got training and certified in a whole bunch of different areas. You know, I wanted to be the exchange guy, the, the Linux guy, VMware storage, the network guy. I wanted to know how to do all of it. And once I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on that, I had different roles and senior admins, senior engineers. I went in to kind of learn uh, project management, IT leadership, and got a couple roles uh, doing that kind of stuff. And when I got to do an IT leadership, it really was exciting to kind of be on the front side of deciding where the technology for our company was going to go. And so I got to kind of take some chances where I hadn't been able to in the past. And one of those chances uh, I gave to uh, to put my trust in a, a new company called Cohesity a few years back and brought them in to do, to replace, uh, I guess, three different backup products, um, a backup app, two backup applications uh, that are pretty well known. And then uh, kind of the main backup vendor that was known for their deduplication uh, and compression uh, appliances and uh, brought in Cohesity to replace all three of those products. Um, I really just had budget to replace one of them, uh, but found out that Cohesity had a lot more to offer. And I kind of used that to sell it towards to my CIO saying, I can replace three things with this one product. And uh, it, it really, really worked for me. And so I got to be really passionate about the company started following them and then just got on cohesity's career site and just kept hitting refresh until they opened up a role right here in nashville and i basically went stalker mode so until they gave me a job <laughs> that is so funny so you wanted to be the uh macgyver of technology that's cool Yes. And then you fell in love with Cohesity. I love that story. I love it when I hear you tell clients that story about kind of how you migrated from the business side to the manufacturer side. What did you find so compelling? I mean, I know you kind of touched on, um, you know, replacing three products with one, but what did you find most compelling about Cohesity? Like what drew you over? Yeah, I, I tell the story a lot. It uh, it works. <laughs> I, I love products that actually work. They they work as advertised, but I bought into the vision. They said, this is what we're going to do today, but this is where we see data centers going. And we're not only just going to be a backup company. We're going to be backup is where we start. We want you to be able to search your data and store unstructured data, um, data in the cloud, data on-prem. And it just really expanded of uh, what I thought I knew about IT. Really cool. And it, it just got me thinking a lot deeper. That's awesome. And so then you made the leap. Um, with that, what do you, how do you see data protection evolving or changing? Absolutely. So data protection used to just be about recovering files, uh, maybe the occasional database or maybe a whole VM. That's kind of the... Uh, what data protection used to be where it is now is your data is actually being sought out and attacked people are going after your users trying to get them to click on links and when they do now we're going to go after everything they have access to and if they get access to one of your domain admin accounts watch out that is a really really bad day week and month uh, because they're actively going after your data to encrypt it to hold it at ransom and uh, it's, a, it's an actual big business. They have their own help desk, the bad guys do. So they're going after our data. Um, and so now data protection is not just about recovering files. It's how do you recover everything really, really fast to get your business back online? Oh, that is such a relevant topic. Um, 
that under attack type of thinking is the new way to be thinking. It's not is it when, and it's so much more challenging than it used to be. So I'm happy to hear that you kind of see that um, as a common thread, because I think that's one thing that comes up over and over again when I'm meeting with businesses. Um, with that, what do you see um, as something that people fail to recognize about their mission critical data? Um, our mission critical data, we just take for granted that it's always there. What does downtime actually cost us? Um, downtime of uh, the systems that run your production lines, downtime of the system that the physician accesses to pull up patient records, um, downtime of email. What does that cost your business? Um, not only just the time of your IT admin's hourly rate to get it back online, but um, missed revenue, um, customer reputation. You have to think about all of those things when you think about how to protect your data and how fast you can get it back. I don't, I don't think organizations think about that enough. Right. And it's hard to quantify. And so it, it requires a tremendous amount of work to try to quantify that. And I think that that's the challenge, um, you know, that a lot of businesses are facing today from my perspective is quantifying that, that outage. What does that cost in soft costs and hard costs? Like you said, I mean, how do you quantify customer reputation? That's, you know, Absolutely. hard. That's really hard. Um, so what do you see? I think we touched on it a little bit, but what do you see as the biggest concern or biggest challenge that businesses are facing now? Um, like I said earlier, we're, they're just under attack. Uh, so with this latest solar winds uh, attack, they were going after big businesses. Um, a lot of government agencies are being selected out and specifically attacked. Healthcare organizations are being attacked right now. So. You have to really, you know, this needs to go up to the CEO level. They need to be having these conversations and put a contingency plan in place. Like, what happens? What are the first five steps we take when this happens? You know, does our company have a Bitcoin account? Do we have cyber insurance? Things like that. Things we don't typically think of. Um, that's where uh, that's where companies need to start thinking. Sure. Yeah. So with that, if you had to give um, a business owner advice about how to protect their data or what to do to protect their data, what would you say? I would say make this a priority. Um, when I come into an organization as a consultant role or in a leadership role, I look at all the projects um, that, that seem to be a priority for everybody. But then I, the first question I ask is, what is your backup solution and how? Are you sure it's going to work? Have you tested it? Things like that. And this is not just because I work at Cohesity now. This is what I've done in the past at previous organizations. I come in and make sure that if something happens right now, I could recover from this. It, it may take a while, but I have to know that I can recover from it. And if I can do that, then I can move on to other projects. But that has to be the number one thing. Because they're I trusting us folks in IT, uh, they're, they're trusting us to make sure that we, we've got this covered, so they don't have to think about it. Absolutely. I would imagine that uh, IT business leaders would be sleeping a lot better if they knew that they could recover. Um, and I think that that's, that's a good point. Just make it a primary focus. And I think that it can be sold to leadership because of that, that quantifying the downtime. Absolutely. But, and that's where, you know, like you, Lisa, that's where you come in. Um, I used to really stress on the value part of value added reseller because I would build a relationship with my VAR and let them be the people that kind of filter, filter out all the noise out there because everybody's got the best product out there. And, um, and you see a lot of that. You get, um, you know, manufacturers calling you all the time wanting, you to represent them. And so you talk to your engineers, you vet them for other companies because you understand what your customer needs. Let me go help find a solution that can fit your needs. And sometimes that's training the customer. Sometimes it's it's just filtering the customer from all the noise that's out there. So um, as a former IT leader, I leaned heavily on my bar. So um, that's where um, what, what I would stress to your listeners today is, is to reach out to you, reach out to your to your VAR and 
and learn about what all is out there. Don't just assume you know uh, the best things that are out there. Just always be willing to accept the knowledge and to learn more about this. Cool. Well, I appreciate that. We definitely try to add value as we move along and we do get exposed to a ton of technology. I think the problem as a consumer now is that there's just a wealth of information. There's a wealth of um, companies saying we do it best, we do it best, but uh, our whole goal is to keep a customer for life. And you don't do that by um, putting a square peg in a round hole. So anyway, um, well, Derek, I always appreciate talking to you and um, love doing deals with you here in Tennessee. So thank you very much for joining me today. Absolutely. Let me know how I can help. Sure. And if you liked what you heard, please tune in for next week with In Techno with Lissa and Arctic Wolf and subscribe to my YouTube channel, In Techno with Lissa. Have a great day and thanks so much for watching.